Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. This is fifth video in the register-based programming series, and today we will cover the analog to digital converter. Let's take a look at the STM32F4 reference manual. Here is some description given about the ADC, and you can see, we have configurable resolution, which is not present in F103. ADC on and off control. We can turn the ADC on by setting the AD on bit of CR2 register. And to start the conversion, we have to set the SW start bit. Again the ADC can be disabled by clearing the AD on bit. Now let's talk about the ADC clock. As you can see here, the clock is common to all the ADC, and it is derived from the APB2 clock, and divided using the prescalers. We'll check the datasheet to find out the maximum ADC clock. But before that, this is my clock setup, that I used in the first video, and I will be using the same setup here too. Please note here the APB2 clock is 90 MHz. Now let's open the datasheet. Look for the ADC characteristics. As you can see the maximum ADC clock that I can get is 36 MHz. The VDDA is 3.3 volts by default. So, the max ADC clock can be 36 MHz, and as I have shown the APB2 clock is running at 90 MHz, so I cannot use the prescaler of 2, otherwise the ADC clock will come to 45 MHz, and that's not possible in this controller. The minimum prescaler that I can use with this clock setup is 4, and that's what I am going to use. Then we have to select channel, then select the conversion mode, and a lot of other things. I will cover them all, but let's create the project in Kyle first. Choose the microcontroller here. Select the code, and the device startup file. Here is our project, let's add the main file to this project first. Now I am going to include the clock configuration files. We need to include them in our project also. This is the same setup, that I have used in all of my videos. You can see the first video in this series to understand it. Let's include the RCC config in the main file. Let's build it once. No errors here, let's go ahead. ADC in it will be used, to initialize the ADC. Here are the steps listed that we need to follow. We need to enable the clocks first, then set the prescaler, then configure the scan mode and resolution. Then configure the continuous conversion, data alignment etc. Let's start with the configuration of the clocks first. Clocks can be configured in the RCC register. I will be using two channels of ADC1, and both of them are connected to GPIOA. So I need to enable the clock for the GPIOA. To do so, I need to modify the AHB1 enable register. Zeroth bit here corresponds to GPIO clock, and I need to write a 1 in this zeroth position. That's what I did here. 
Now the ADC clock. I am using ADC1, and to enable the clock, I need to modify the APB2 clock enable register. As you can see the 8th bit is the ADC1 enable bit. So I need to write a 1 in the 8th position. Now the clocks are enabled, let's set the prescaler in the common control register. As I have already mentioned that my APB2 clock is running at 90 MHz. As you can see the bits 16 to 18 controls the prescaler, and here I cannot set it as 2, or else the clock will exceed the maximum limit. So I will set the prescaler as 4, and write a 1 in the 16th position. Now configure the scan mode and the resolution in the control register 1. Bits 24 and 25 control the resolution, and I will keep them zero, since I will be using 12-bit resolution. I need to enable the scan mode, since I am using two channels, so set the bit 8, to 1. Now the configuration of control register 2. I will keep the data alignment to the right, so the bit 11 will be 0. Also, I want the end of conversion flag to set after each conversion, so the bit 10 will be 1. and the continuous conversion is also set to 1. Next is the selection for the sampling time. We have two sampling registers here, and these denotes the channel number. Since I am using the channel 1 and channel 4, I need to use the sample register 1. I have made a video on sampling time and frequency, you can check it on the top right corner. Since I am not using any ADC device, that needs a particular sampling rate, I will just use the sampling of 3 cycles for simplicity. So I need to set zeros at the 3rd and the 12th positions for channel 1 and channel 4. Now we need to configure the sequence registers. ADC sequence register 1 have this L bit here. This basically indicates how many channels are we using. This bit must be 0 for single channel, 1 for 2 channels, and it should be 15, if you are suing all the 16 channels. Since I am using 2 channels, I will write a 1, 
in the 20th position. The rest of the sequence configuration will come later. At last, we need to configure the pins as the analog pins. This can be done in the GPIO mode register. To set the pins as analog, we need to write a 3 in the respective pins. Pins PA1 and PA4 are set as analog pins. This completes the initialization of the ADC. Now this function will enable the ADC. Steps are mentioned here. First we will enable the AD on bit to enable the ADC, and then wait for some time for the ADC to stabilize. In the control register 2, bit 0 is the AD on bit, and we need to set it to 1. And now we will wait for a small amount of time. Now the function to start the ADC, and it takes the channel number as the parameter. Here, first we will set the channel sequence. Then clear the status register. And finally start the conversion by setting the SW start bit. Let's see the sequence registers. Here we have three sequence registers, and together they have 16 sequences. So basically you can put the 16 channels in the sequence, that you want the conversion to happen, and these registers will take care of the rest. But that can be handled effectively with the DMA. Since we are not using any DMA, I will only use one sequence, and put one channel in the sequence register at a time. First clear the sequence register, and then write the channel number in the zeroth position. Clear the status register. And finally, we will start the conversion by setting the 30th bit on the CR2 register. Wait for conversion will wait for the conversion to finish. EOC bit on the status register gets set when the single conversion is complete, or the conversion of the sequence is complete. So we will look for this bit to set. And after the conversion is complete, we will copy the data from the data register. We can also disable the ADC by clearing the AD on bit in the CR2 register. That's all regarding the ADC functions. Let's create an array to store the ADC values. In the main function, Let's call the system clock configuration first. Now initialize the ADC. Enable the ADC. In the while loop, first we will start the ADC with channel 1. Now wait for the conversion to finish. And finally read the value. 
We will do the same for the channel 4 also. So that's all, let's build it now. Let's change some settings. Type the clock frequency here, mine is running at 180 MHz. Go to debug, and select ST link. Let's debug it now. I will add this ADC value to the watch expression. Let's start it. Here I have connected the channel 1 to ground, and the channel 4 to 3.3 volts, and that's why channel 1 reads 0, whereas the channel 4 reads 4095. Now I am changing the channel 1 to 3.3 volts, and channel 4 to the ground, and you can see the readings also changes for them. And now when both are grounded, both reads zero. This method we used today is like polling for the conversion to finish. And also you saw, we were able to use multiple channels without even using the DMA, which is kinda not possible with HAL library. Using registers gives us more control over the hardware, and that's why sometimes it's the best to go with. Obviously I will cover the DMA, and interrupts also, but first I want to cover some basic peripherals. This is it for this video. I hope you understood it. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case you have any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.